So my girlfriend texts me last night. She's like, should I be bothered when somebody says they're an engineer, but they work in computers? <laughs> like, oh, oh dear. Oh, honey. It's funny how just, uh, you know, software developers have sort of colonized the term engineer to the extent that they just don't call themselves software engineers anymore. They just drop the software part and they, and they call themselves engineers. And of course, she comes from a family of engineers of the actual go out and you know, build things type. And uh, they're the kind of people who are of the opinion that you don't get to call yourself an engineer unless you have a PNG. And, you know, I could say something about how uh, software development doesn't really even have like an engineering culture to the extent that there's, you know, no professional oath kind of induction process thing. There's no licensure. There's no liability if you make something that hurts people, etc. But I think I would focus instead on the fact that, and I mean, I've been making software for 25 years at this point. The fact that, at least in my experience, like there's really not a lot in software development that actually even resembles engineering in the first place. And I want to argue that that's actually okay. And by the stuff that qualifies, I would say interactions with hardware where the interactions are significant would be a, a big component of like where the actual engineering would happen to the extent that it does. So things like uh, actually caring about algorithmic, you know, big O notation stuff, actually caring about like what the hardware is going to cost, um, caring about things like, you know, having to send a packet around the world and back and the implications of that, you know, storage and memory and, 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 and CPU and bandwidth, really. And then there's the other aspect of how it uh, interacts with people. So I'm thinking like Fear Act 25, the Patriot Missile, the USS Yorktown. Okay, all those three situations. Fear Act 25 was a, a radiation therapy machine. The software made it irradiate people with like two orders of magnitude more radiation than was okay uh, and, and killed them. Uh, the Patriot Missile uh, had a fixed point uh, register, uh, which was counting off tenths of a second, but like one tenth is an irrational number when it's represented in binary, and that caused it to drift, the, the timer to drift, which was essential to the targeting mechanism. So the targeting mechanism, if you would run the, the missile, or rather you kept the system on for two days or whatever it was, and then you go to fire it, 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 it goes a mile off course kind of a thing. So that's another bug. The USS Yorktown, it was a division by zero error that uh, crashed the ship's navigation system and had, it left it dead in the water until the entire system rebooted. So I would consider those to be engineering problems as well. But just in my experience, that's just that kind of thing is just not what you're doing when you're making software most of the time. I mean, most software is just application development. And in application development, you're doing a lot of selecting library functions and or methods, whatever, and you're just basically looking things up in catalogs and you're composing it together. And that is just, there's not really a lot of engineering going on there. And the, and the way that you develop it as you add a bit and then you look at it and then you add another bit and you look at it and you sort of do that over and over again until you've got something that looks right. So it's more of a tinkering situation than it is a, uh, an engineering thing. But uh, the tendency to, to use the phrase build software, I think is a mistake. 
And there's a culture of that. Like people used to say write software. Like I say write software. But uh, uh, people used to say, they used to use the, the verb write until the uh, 70s or 80s, I think, when the building metaphor was actually sort of written about, uh, I believe it was Parnas, that uh, introduced the building metaphor. Because Fred Brooks uh, talked about that in his uh, presentations. And, and, and sure, like you can, you assemble and compose, but I think that the, the word build is just, it's limiting. Like that's my concern with it. It's, it's, it's a inaccuracy that propagates into the, into the work product because when I write software, a lot of the time I am rewriting it. And by that, I mean, you know, refactoring could be an aspect of that, but, um, it's, it could also be, you know, I just, I, I see an arrangement that looks saner or just a, a different paradigm, like a different representation of an idea. And that is a, just a fundamentally different, different mindset. And I think that when you sort of build up this idea that you're building an engineering. I go back to the notion that, that engineering is when you go from zero possibilities to one possibility, zero solutions to one solution. But there's also design where you go from infinite or at least arbitrarily many solutions and possibilities to just exactly one. And that is more of a matter of deciding what to do. Like so much of the time when I sit down to write software, it's deciding like, okay, like this can go a hundred different ways. Like which one, which one should I do? It, and the process of narrowing down the approach. Now, there is the zero to one approach. There absolutely are. Like, how are we going to do this? How are we going to, you know, make this thing happen? How are we going to, like, for instance, like, you know, a terabyte matrix of, of, of numbers that we have to crunch and do it in, you know, a few milliseconds like that, uh, you know, that's an engineering problem. Like how are we, we don't know how we're going to do this, how we're going to do this. But then there's the other aspect of we don't know how we're going to do this because we could do, you know, we could lay this interface out a hundred different ways. We could organize this code a hundred different ways. You know, we could call this thing 10 different things. And, you know, coming up with schemas and regimes and you know uh, language and i mean i've written about this for decades now maybe not decades total but more than a decade is that software is made of language and i think we should embrace that anyway i'm going to finish my coffee